Hello everyone and welcome uh, to this webinar, the Hospitality Forward webinar organized by Vatel and uh, in partnership with Alliance International University. Uh, very, very happy today to have uh, a special guest, Sergei uh, Aver, who is a Vatel graduate from 2016. So, uh, uh, we are very happy to have him as our guest and uh, talking about his career and uh, this uh, fantastic topic, uh, you know, how to recognize the opportunities that a crisis like the one we are going through uh, can offer. Um, today with us, we have Vivian. Uh, Vivian Sun is going to be uh, uh, the technician and uh, the representative for Alliance International University. And I am Nathalie Pleriovac, uh, the program director for the MBA program at Vettel USA. Uh, I hope uh, everyone will enjoy this, this webinar and uh, we will just move forward and, and start uh, with uh, the program. Uh, if Vivian can put up the slide, uh, so we will, we will go over our agenda today. Um, so um, Vivian will introduce the uh, Alliance International University uh, CSML programs. Uh, CSML stands for California uh, School of Management and Leadership, uh, which the VATEL program is a part of. Uh, I will also introduce the VATEL programs here uh, in California with Alliance. And uh, our guest, uh, Sergei Aver, will uh, do a presentation. It will be about 30 minutes and um, feel free to ask questions and to interact with Sergei during the presentation. If you have questions, you're more than welcome to ask. Um, and then we will also have a special, uh, you know, 20, 30 minutes of question and answer at the end. Um, we will announce our next webinar with Alliant and um, and of course, um, you know, you're welcome to uh, contact us at Alliant or Vatel if you want more information about our programs. Um, so Vivian, uh, I will let you the lead if you want to introduce uh, all the great programs that Alliant is offering. Thank you, Natalie. Uh, this is Vivian. Um, I'm going to uh, introduce our California School of Management Leadership Program. We offer different uh, business programs in the management of the tech and the quant area, areas. So hospitality management with our Battelle partner is a growing focus. So we do offer bachelor, master, and doctorate level programs. Uh, we especially, we offer MBA with hospitality management specialization and also in, with information technology and the, the digital marketing specialization. Those two master degree program, uh, it's a CPT approved. Uh, we also have master of data analysis, master of uh, information system and the technology and the uh, healthcare analysis. Those three master program is a STEM program as well. So we have three bachelor degrees. One is in hospitality management also CPT approved. Another two is in uh, information system and the digital marketing specialization and uh, uh, the ad business administration program. So the last one is our DBA with specialization in information and the data science. So now I let Natalie to introduce the Battelle program as well. Thank you, Vivian. Um, so um, I am the program director and uh, also uh, in relation with the hotels uh, that, that are uh, welcoming our students for internships. Um, first, the Vatel group, for those who are not familiar with Vatel, um, is a hospitality business school uh, who started in, that started in France. Uh, now there are five campuses in France, like uh, Paris, Lyon, Nîmes, Bordeaux, uh, and then not, uh, we have also schools in Switzerland, uh, Spain, Belgium, uh, and actually all over the world, uh, since the Vatel Group has now 50 campuses all over the world, like Philippines, China, North America, uh, pretty much everywhere. Uh, 
Um, so the vision for Vatel is really to provide uh, a, a cursus where the students can have exceptional uh, quality education, uh, so academically, and also on the field. So that's why Vatel is also really renowned uh, throughout the world and really appreciated with all the, 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 the main hospitality uh, companies and big hotels, uh, because we provide also uh, opportunities for our students to train and, and be really, really well trained and, and professional when they finish their courses. Uh, here in Vettel, USA, uh, the campus is uh, located in San Diego, um, and our students are uh, able to train uh, to do a part-time part internship uh, during their studies uh, for one year of the MBA or uh, during the bachelor program. They have also internship at the end of each of the uh, four years program. And, um, and with the MBA, uh, they work part-time during their studies, up to 20 hours a week uh, with the CPT uh, accreditation. And then at the end, uh, they have a full year uh, of uh, training opportunity and we help them uh, find internship in the biggest hotels, even boutique hotels as well. And they, the goal is really that they um, finish with responsibilities, uh, with supervisor posi positions, or even assistant manager or manager position. And so they can be launched to their career. And that's really um, uh, how, you know, we, we are very, very proud of our students who are launched to very successful career after their MBA program. Uh, one of them uh, is with us today <laughs> since Sergei graduated with Vettel USA in 2016. Uh, we are very, very proud uh, of your career. Sergei, you're really a, a good example of uh, the, the, the kind of success our students can expect after this program. Um, you first um, uh, study in Vettel, Switzerland uh, for your bachelor degree. And and then uh, you moved to um, uh, Battle Philippines uh, in Manila with the Marco Polo program. Uh, Marco Polo program is a fantastic opportunity for the bachelor students to study abroad for six months uh, in one of the other Battle uh, schools that, that we have uh, around the world. Uh, and there you, you had also a professional experience. I know you, you work in China. Um, so I'm going to uh, give you uh, the, the lead and uh, you can introduce yourself a little bit more and uh, tell us about your parkour and how it's relevant with our subject, subject today. Sure. Well, first, uh, thank you, Nathalie, uh, for, and, and Vatel for following me to, to join this, uh, this seminar. And thank you, Vivian and Alliance as well. So as you mentioned, um, I started with Vatel Switzerland. I have now, what, over... 12 years of experience in the luxury hospitality industry. Uh, starting in Switzerland, worked with a uh, well-known chef, uh, Michel Roth in, um, in, uh, in Geneva, and moved to, to Vettel Manila, uh, where I stayed in Asia for a year, uh, and worked at a Sofitel, the quality control manager uh, in China, before then finishing my bachelor degree in, uh, in Vettel, Switzerland. And after this, I decided to do my MBA in, uh, with Vettel uh, US, uh, Nathalie, actually, I think you're the one who, who did the first interview, <laughs> the first interview uh, with me at the time. Yes. And um, so for two years before moving to, to New York and finding an opportunity with the Bagatelle Group um, for a year as operation manager and standardizing the brand, and then moved to Petrosian, where I am today as a boutique general, ma general manager and project development specialist at Petrosian. Mm -hmm. so, so what's really interesting is that during the MBA program, um, you worked as an intern, a manage, uh, trainee, management trainee intern uh, at uh, the Bagatelle group. And then, yeah. and then you, you, you expanded uh, your, your network and, uh, and that's how you managed to get in contact with Petrosian and then, uh, then you got a, a working visa. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I got a working visa with Bagatelle and uh, with, with uh, the work I've done, I ended up standardizing actually the brand with Petrosian. 
and that's where the relationship with Petros with Petrosian started. And at some point in in, in the early career, they offered me a position with them. And right now, I'm uh, I'm on the process for green card, so I almost uh, fully set for the US. <laughs> very good, very good. Um, who, who have you know? It's an amazing opportunity, and uh, also what's uh, what's really uh, a good example, and, uh, and 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 you know, launched you to where you are today is that with Bagatelle, you already had a management position. Absolutely. Absolutely, at the corporate, uh, it hasn't been easy. I think we'll talk about that uh, later on uh, on the OPT. And it hasn't been easy. I got it pretty late, uh, but I uh, fought a lot for it. Uh, went twice to New York while I was in San Diego, uh, doing interview here and there, sending back email, pushing uh, until until it works, and uh, it eventually worked. It worked out pretty well since uh, I'm still in New York now four years later with uh, a strong brand like Petrosian, a uh, beautiful position and uh, and all the visa I need to stay in the US. Yes, and, and becoming an entrepreneur as well. So as well, as well absolutely. <laughs> so, um, we, we'll be talking a bit more also later on, but uh, mm -hmm. there is now um, four, four uh, there were four companies I've started, I've been partner with. Um, one is actually launched already since December. It's a bakery in Soho, and uh, and the three others, two others are still ongoing. So and again, we'll be talking a bit more. I don't want to spoil everything. Yes, we don't want to spoil. So uh, if Vivian can maybe um, uh, put the first slides, uh, I know Sergey prepared a, a nice PowerPoint presentation to assist with uh, his presentation. Very nice. So, um, Sergey, we are looking forward to learn more about uh, how you managed to turn the crisis into opportunities. Well, thank, thank you, Natalie. So, uh, yeah, as you mentioned, I'm not going to talk much about my work at Petrosian, uh, but more on how to find solutions in time of crisis, especially regarding Euro PT and work opportunities, because uh, I guess most of the uh, people who will be watching this webinar are uh, students uh, at Vatel and looking looking to, to get this OPT during a time of crisis, which is never easy. Now, as I mentioned, I've been looking for an OPT myself four years ago, uh, so I know how challenging it can be, especially during a crisis. However, it's very important to know that there are always opportunities, especially in the US and especially during a crisis. And so we just need to shift our processes of seeing things and how things are actually running usually on an everyday basis and shift that to another mindset. So what we will try to do actually today is to show how to do this shift in understanding those opportunities that would open the doors to an OPT, to a long-term contract with Visa, and even entrepreneurship as well as we'll be talking a lot about. Um, just before we get to the second slide, the presentation will be in two parts. The first part, uh, with more on the theory on how to analyze a crisis and see how, uh, um, how getting uh, opportunities from a crisis. And a second part where I'm going to be talking a bit more about the companies I've mentioned before and how each scenarios, some have been failing, some succeeded, some are still ongoing, uh, but much more on the real example and, uh, and concrete example too. So the first part is to uh, analyze the crisis to understand what it is, what kind it is. So as you see, what type of crisis you can have a sanitary, financial, political, social. Uh, the COVID is obviously a sanitary crisis, but you also had uh, the yellow jacket in France last year, which is more of a social crisis. Uh, the stock market in 2008, obviously, uh, which is more of a financial crisis. Um, Black Lives Matter, we could argue that it's a mix between a social and a political crisis as well. Um, and the political crisis, not in the US, but very recently in Brazil, in Lebanon as well. Um, so it's important that to understand which crisis, if it's also local, if it's per state, per city, per in the world, like the one we're living in right now. But I gave this example to show you that in less than two years, there are already just four crises that happened on different level, and that means a lot of opportunities. So on the second point, which would be 
to analyze the market. So Vivian, if you don't mind just switching to the second page. Thank you. So who is impacted? Who gets stronger? Uh, understanding the crisis, why the crisis is, is still happening is very important. You will see during this whole presentation, there are different stages on the pre-crisis, pre um, early stages, late stages, and post-crisis. So we need to understand from where it started to now, why, how, uh, who is impacted by it. So obviously, the closure of restaurants, of hotels, events, uh, entertainment, all of those industries like pretty much shut down. Who gets stronger? So the pharmaceutical companies like Moderna, uh, you have CTMD, Gilead, um, all the major pharmaceutical, but also the smaller one, uh, CVS, all those uh, companies, of course, their, their revenue rise up. The health and hygiene companies and the tech companies, as very often, uh, but in this crisis especially, we couldn't go out, you needed to have interaction with the world, so new apps popped up, the deliveries to stay into hospitality, but a, a lot of different apps also started to, to, to rise up for the real estate as well. So, and therefore, it's important to understand in which sector and therefore which format the opportunity can be shaped into. So from this moment on, on who is getting impact and who gets stronger to have an idea on where the opportunity might open its door. So on the third point, which is analyze the supply and the demand, this is more on the early stage, even if we could argue we're not done with the, we're not done with the crisis, far, uh, far from that, it would, this would be more on the really first few months of a crisis. What industries are falling, are fa falling and failing? What people need now? So you have also a, a Concrete example, like, and this is based on New York because uh, we discussed a bit with Natalie, but Le Pain Quotidien, for example, is not closed on the West Coast. And in New York here, all the Pain Quotidien, they're closed. The Prêt à Manger, they're closed as well. Uh, Kaiser is, um, is discussing very strongly about shutting down completely uh, its uh, distribution channel. Some, uh, of course, retail closing brands, Supermarket, that was true very early. Um, that's, not true. that's not true now. Uh, it was just a very short window. And of course, the hospitality. We have the Edition Hotel, who just opened. Like, it was a September last year. They definitely closed right here in New York. The Four Seasons as well is going to close. You have some of the top hotels, and just mentioning like uh, Baccarat, the Peninsula, or, or other big hotels that might not uh, reopen before Q2 2021. Um, you have, so of course, restaurants, bars, uh, or hospitality groups. Those ones are really in the early stage. They were the first one impacted. And what people needed most, of course, groceries, getting food in because they, could, they couldn't eat outside, some masks, uh, e-commerce, therefore, the health control, new health standards, feeling safe. So that's really on the early early stages on to understand the crisis and shape again. The idea is to shape an opportunity out, out of the crisis. So out of this already, we can see some, some gaps that might need to be filled up uh, later on in the crisis. So which we would see on, on slide four with the post-crisis, where actually the post-crisis, we're not in there yet, but it might be time to to think about that in the way that in February and March, we had no idea when the crisis would, would finish. We would think it would be end of this year. Some would think it was during summer. Well, it was still very early. Now, we're now a few months in there and we can see in our first forecast on vaccines on different aspects that would announce pretty much the end of the crisis. Uh, in s about six, eight months, s uh, 18 months for some to 12 or 18 months or so, some say. But we can see, we can see an end of this crisis. And that, that's why it might be time to start thinking of this post crisis of what industry are more likely to fall and to not just to com definitely close. So we're going to get back on the same company we mentioned, the events, the catering, hospitality, restaurant, bar, entertainment, or the movie theater. Uh, the fashion 
as well, or the fashion shows, uh, and what people will need after the crisis. So going out, being social again, spending money, feeling safe, very important. Um, and they will gather again, weddings, they will want to go out to eat, to drink, to see the family, travel as well, a lot. Um, and so that's where on the theory or so we can craft and start really crafting opportunities and idea and concepts to fill up those gaps. So just before, I don't know if there is any question, just before we get a bit more into the, um, the concrete and uh, real example part of the presentation, as this uh, is your theoretical. Yes. We, we don't have questions yet from uh, our participants, but uh, I would like to invite them to really, um, you know, wave hand, um, um, use the, the chat to ask their questions. And uh, we can also, um, at, at the end for the Q and A's, we, we will be able to, um, you know, uh, put on the screen uh, those who want to ask questions uh, for that during the presentation. Feel free to type your questions uh, in the chat and um, uh, it, it, it's going to be nice to have this interaction with you, uh, uh, with Sergey. Um, Perfect. Okay. Right, right now, yeah. no questions. Yeah, feel free. So, as you said just before, entrepreneurship is one of the solution. At least that is the one I'm, uh, I, uh, I've been taking um, to turn a crisis into an opportunity. And so, on the next slide, as um, as uh, Vivian, if you don't mind, yeah, as Van God say, knowing is not enough. We must apply. Willing is not enough. We must do. All this to say, of course, acting is very important on your action, but the timing as well. The timing is usually very important because like every crisis, they start very fast and never last forever, fortunately, actually, that's the good news. But therefore, the more we wait to act on it, the more your opportunity window will be closing. This is true for most of the cases. There are always exceptions with specific time in mind, uh, and timings that either need to wait or need uh, or need to uh, to open very fast. So, on the next slide, which would be um, the path, I will be. I have four projects to explain a little bit about, um, and the fourth one I'm going to talk about it more in details in the next slide. But first, I'd like to talk about three projects of mine. Um, um, one that worked really well. We opened a bakery. Uh, very, very high-end bakery called Switch Rehab in Soho in December last year. So just before COVID. Just before COVID, we opened it. Uh, worked pretty well. The, the executive chef, pastry chef, is uh, was at uh, Alain Ducasse, Pas Athene, and the baker chef at Le Bristol. So very high-end. I invite you to, to, to go look at it, Switch Rehab. And it worked pretty well. And the crisis hit. And obviously, the crisis hit. And therefore, we're thinking of one thing. Should we, should we close, should we open, continue, should we change our business model? And we changed a little bit our business model. We couldn't have people inside anymore. So we started to develop, even though we were very high end, to develop apps, the apps, the delivery apps, uh, reaching out to private clients, yachts, um, uh, as well as um, private companies that like the banks and other uh, uh, corporate, corporate brands that couldn't gather their people together, and but therefore were, were doing like online classes, a kind of seminar like what we're doing, but for, for the associates. And that's where we found a new opportunity, a, a market that we didn't at all write on uh, into our business plan originally, because we were more focusing on our people coming for the retail space, within the retail space and the restaurants and hotels. It developed the extra revenues that actually helped us to go through the crisis really smoothly. And now actually since early September, so since two weeks, uh, we're getting back to numbers and revenues like we were doing before the crisis. So we're really happy about that. And, and uh, but we, if we would have stayed in our say, same business model, it would have never happened. That's for sure. And Sergey, may I ask you a question? <laughs> um, uh, how how did you find these new uh, clients, these new targets, and um, when 
How did that happen? So, so there are two things. There are one, again, it's been 12 years I'm in the industry, four years I'm in New York. And so I've been developing a network through my work, through friends, through other battalions as well, um, to coworkers that allow us to, to be reachable, to be reachable, to know when somebody needs something and also inquiring, that's very important. If you don't inquire, go for the information constantly, uh, asking, sending emails, calling, visiting in person as well, the places, uh, even though they the seem closed or they're not in activity, um, you're, you're going to, to any building in New York and they have the, the building manager, you go for any bank, any corporate offices, and they're go, there is a person that is in charge of all the events for the building, for example, for the bank or for the, the insurance company. And those people have to reach out to them, LinkedIn, looking on LinkedIn, finding your target, your area, and endearing, sending, sending emails, sending uh, messages, asking also your network. Um, and when I mean asking your network, it doesn't mean posting something on social media because this is very impersonal. It works to some extent, but with a network you're building, you have some people that are specific to do some specific things and some other doing some other things. So target the, the right fit directly, personally create create some um, uh, privacy between the, the concept uh, and the idea and the sharing to make sure it's a win-win situation. You can also, there are newsletter all over today, we have internet, uh, subscribe to newsletter for brands, for uh, hotel brands, hospitality, uh, but also retail stores, even the city, uh, the city you're in or the city you're targeting, they're going to send you uh, new laws, new real estate. Just, it's just a flu of information that is coming your way. And your own brain is going to make the, the magic and maybe so find, a, find something out of that. So, yeah, so that's, that's how, how we, we've targeted exactly is we, bring, we discuss how, what, what uh, companies, what were needing it, what, who was needing what. I could see also in my own industry with the caviar industry, like the, how we shift our model as well a little bit. I'm uh, going a bit online with the classes, uh, some private, your private clients wanted to do this experience because they had nothing much to do. They couldn't go out. Uh, uh, and therefore that's how we came to, to this, um, this mindset. Um, a second, uh, did I answer your question, Natalie? Uh Yes, you did. Thank you, Sergey. So, a second one, which is actually a project that that failed. Uh, we 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 tried it in the. It's Vivian. If you don't mind, just getting back on the pre previous one. Yeah, we still have two projects to tackle, and then we we'll get to the next slide. Um, so it's called Saint Plus. Uh, it's uh, at the really beginning of the crisis. We wanted so we build a team. And uh, we wanted to, uh, we had the executive chef of Montage, we had uh, uh, directors of big groups, I, ca I cannot mention. Um, and we wanted to create standards like the A, B, C grading for the regular hygiene um, test. And we, and we wanted to create standards for the COVID. To, so the restaurant could put this label on uh, on the air or on any delivery app or even outside uh, on, their, on their opening door. We built the whole standards. We had a doctor with us as well, of course. And the whole standard, we built it. However, what happened, we took too long and all the competition, the main leaders in these industries already were in and already had deal with the cities. And, and so it failed, but we tried it. We learned a lot. Uh, it just cost us a bit of time. Uh, I have a question, Sergei. Uh, how much time are we talking about? What was the the the, the, the lapse of time between the moment you you say, okay, we should do that. It's it's going to be something really helpful, and we can really do a, a business model with that. And the moment where you realize that other people did it already. So this was also because it's a very particular segment. It was very short. It was one month. But one in terms of work itself, 
it's 20 hours. Oh, so that's not that long. It's not that long. Mm -hmm. You know, you gather people for a weekend, even online, and you work two times eight hours, you have a full business plan with finance and everything. I'm going to talk actually about that, how we did it for the, for the fourth project. Interesting. It, it, we have so much time and we don't realize it because there are a lot of distractions. Uh, and working on projects doesn't mean not having fun and being with people you enjoy being with. On the contrary, actually. So you can, you can blend both. It's true that at the beginning of the pandemic and with the confinement, we had all a lot of time to, <laughs> on our end. Uh, but uh, I, I totally agree with you about distractions. So very easy to be distracted. But when you have a goal, and especially when you build a team, uh, yeah. then, then you're way more efficient than you can think, right? Absolutely, absolutely. The t and the team aspect on the... Um, and the, the first project is gonna ha it, it has a very important uh, it takes a very big importance in there as uh, as it was drove all of us but the, just before that there it's another an ongoing project which is um, we actually we, we dropped the patterns uh, we've got everything now and it's I cannot talk too much about it but it's a, a, a premix that is gonna be coming from uh, Puerto Rico and we actually were supposed to launch it earlier this year with the crisis. We're going to launch it a bit later on. But this, the opportunities, the crisis gave us the opportunity to have the distributors that want to see more new brands to come in uh, to fill up the Christmas, uh, the Christmas and the holidays as their sales were not that, that good. On another end, the liquor store, they did super good. It's incredible. They did in a month. I have a lot of some a lot of retailers that told me in a month they did about three months of revenues. So the times three on, on a monthly revenue up to July. August is a bit different, but up to July. So for six months, half of the year, they never seen that that kind of sales online. People were not even coming. It was just online orders. So really zero cost except the shipping and the and the, the merchandise. So, so that's where we, we took on also, uh, we kind of uh, fast forward a bit this project, uh, pushed it in a way, but fast forward it with um, retailer partners, with distributors, importers. Uh, so it's a really different industry than what we said before, it's really into liquors, but it has, it has, something, it has something to do with the crisis also on the timing and on how we've been doing things. And so, yeah. um, yes, um, uh, when we spoke earlier, um, you mentioned that this project is something you are, you are working on uh, with your partners for quite a long time. But what's really interesting is that you had also, once again, you needed to adjust uh, because to, to adjust with the price. This actually, Nathalie, this is the fourth project. Ah, okay. The fourth okay. brand. This is, this is another thing on the side. You're going to ask me, how, did I, how do I find all the time to get all of this? But it's, really, it's actually really doable if, if, you, if you manage 24 hours properly. And I'm working full time. So that's not even an excuse. So, but on the, so to follow your point, that's going to be on the next slide, Vivian, if you don't mind, um, where I'm going to give you, uh, so it's called BWB. Uh, if you want to know more after the presentation, feel free to contact me. You need to sign an NDA, obviously. Uh, but it's a whole project for now six years that we've been developing with a, a full team. There are we have five founders, three Vatelians actually, uh, one from Vatel US and one from uh, Vatel Switzerland, and uh, and myself. Then. And um, and so. It all started, it's, ba it's basically, it's a whole project between a bakery, a wine bar, and, um, and a bar night club. It's a hospitality group we're building for now six years. And the fact to be a whole team together has been helping a lot on how we move forward. You might say, oh, six years is very long. It's also because we took our time on purpose. We were very early in our career. We wanted to have the experience to have the knowledge as well by doing a, a, an MBA, for my, for, my, for my example. 
um, and to, to know more, to get higher in position with our respective companies before launching. So now we came together as a team, but the team evolved as well. It's always easier to start something when you're building a team, when you're more than one, definitely. First for idea purposes, because two brains is always better than one, but also for motivation, encouraging, uh, and we were five all across the planet. When I mean all across the planet is today we have one in Mexico, one in Paris, some in the US. And for some time we had one in Asia, one in, in the US, one, is there, we were on three continents, Asia, Europe, and, and the US, and we still figure out to move with a project, with deadlines, with things to do every year until actually uh, this year, which is 20, 20 2021. So the, and the team evolved. One of uh, the, the original founders was not matching the criteria, uh, the requirements in terms of career advancement, in terms of even the duty we all had to do. And therefore, we, cannot, we couldn't jeopardize the whole project and therefore we just replaced. We, repla we replaced him, of course, with discussing a lot of discussion. It, it takes some time. And we replaced him and uh, in 24 hours, uh, we had the, the new replacement of, who came from Switzerland, came in the, to Paris at the time, took the handover file. And since, since then, we are the five founders all together. The concept evolved as well within the six years. Uh, it was originally three entities, uh, completely different. And, and now we are building a whole homogeneous concept around it. Um, and it's, it, it helps a lot again to be, to be in a team. We had, uh, to give you concrete example, every year, every year we had at least one person that was maybe at the downtime, uh, either with, with his career or with his visa or with his choice or just a bad time in life. And the fact to have other people around to keep the momentum. And that's what's key is to keep the momentum continuously to make sure the project is going further with deadlines to respect and to push yourself to respect it as well. So, and where we are now, we actually now we are raising the fund. We're doing a fundraising for um, uh, about $5 million that uh, we plan to, to finish uh, by end of, uh, end of this year. And we use actually the crisis to open as the opportunities as, that opened up. It's, Definitely a drop in the real estate price. I have a, I, I was uh, I was with a, a friend of mine who just opened a, a restaurant in New Jersey. Who's going to open a restaurant in New Jersey, and he's deal with a landlord. He has zero rent, and he just have a percentage of revenues. So now is how the crisis brought us and brought the landlords and the real estate industry. These are very amazing deals to 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 do and to, to develop. So that's the first thing. Second thing, when the vaccine will kick in, which we expect in Q2 next year, people will want to go out, to spend, to socialize, uh, definitely uh, to, to party as well, to do events. Uh, so there are a lot, a lot of opportunity within the restaurant and hospitality industry by then. Um, so yes, I would say that's the two, two main points. Uh, oh, also, yes, yeah, sorry, bank and, and, uh, and investors. Everybody pulled out their money like every crisis. Now they're gonna, the, the interest rates are gonna start, are gonna be low. The investors is looking to place money again in a redynamized uh, economy that hopefully in the next uh, two years will get back to pre normal and exceed like it, in all crises what it does. It's after the next two years, the economy is like doing its golden age. So that's what investors are looking at now. So they're looking at strong concepts and ideas to, uh, to be financed at the right timing. Yeah. So that's actually, that's actually it before the, the next slide on how to make it happen. Vivian, if you don't mind. So it would be more on the summarize, to summarize the whole presentation on one, find the market, uh, the market you need, the market need, the market opportunity by analyzing it. 
get the information from anywhere you can, really. Newsletters, people, social media articles, website, uh, food and other shows. Obviously, it's hard in, in this time, but even before time of crisis, you have online shows now, actually. Um, and again, yes, new, newsletter, I would say it's something that is really underused. Or I myself was not using uh, enough when I was, uh, when I was in school. Uh, to get information on the different companies I enjoy. And uh, because it usually goes to spam or we think it just ads and, but actually they are really key information and ideas on how they're turning their business model on what they're suggesting, what they're offering. And that's really interesting. With, uh, with the project, if you want to build a project, don't go alone if you can. Transfer your beliefs of your project to others, make it their vision too. Because being more than one, it's always stronger. I know some people prefer to work alone, and I mean, I'm sure it, it works fine as well. But in my case, being with different people and uh, different partners, and in all those projects, I have different partners. That helps me a lot to open my mind to ideas, uh, my vision too, uh, and not being within the same, uh, I would say, the same, uh, the, the same concept or the, the same minds. It's important to, to try to, to go around as much as you can. Build a team. Going alone is good, but going together is better. And a team is not necessarily defined. Don't be necessarily scared that, okay, I'm going to partner with, all the, with those three, four people, but maybe it's not going to work out later. You know what? Try with it. Uh, most likely it will work if you, if you want it to. And if it doesn't, well, it's, uh, it's too bad. There can be replacement. You can do NDAs. You can protect yourself as well to, to make sure that uh, you stay on top of your project. Um, but as well as a team is not necessarily defined in the way that if you build the project and then the teams collapse, well, at the end of the day, you still realize your goal, which was to, to build it. So it would be already a congress. And put your plan on paper. We didn't mention a lot uh, during the presentation, but business plan, financials, really what you've learned in class, it's, uh, uh, it's literally what it is on the whole accounting, the marketing part, even the economics. Uh, even this presentation, it's a lot supply, demand. It's, it's a part of theory, but I hope you were able to see how to apply it to, to, um, to real concepts. And finally, the harder step is just open it, do it. Don't necessarily wait unless you have a specific time in mind, but don't wait, just, just do it. And uh, especially if it's jumping on a crisis opportunity, your opportunity window is closing little by little. And keep in mind that even if you're studying or working at the same time, if you want to, you can always find the time to work on side project. So I think now it's, uh, if you have any questions, uh, I'd be uh, more than happy to, to answer them. Uh, also, uh, I'm sure you, you have my information if after the, and that is information, if after the, uh, this presentation you, you have questions, uh, feel free. I have Italians who contact me on LinkedIn for opportunities, for uh, questions, also basic questions on, uh, on how the market is here in New York, etc. So I always try to help and respond as fast as I can, if I can help. I'm willing, I'm always willing to do it. Uh, but I understand it's not an easy time, but there are some great things to do, especially with the background you have from Butter. Very, very nice. Thank you so much, Sergei. Thank you. That was, uh, that was uh, a really nice perspective to uh, see, you know, uh, with your background, uh, what you can do in this time of crisis and, uh, and the amount of, of work. And, uh, and we, we can really feel um, how you know it's like you have Antinas and uh, and your entrepreneur uh, through self is always looking for opportunities and uh, and, and and ways to to, to build uh, you know uh, new business models new uh, new ways to, to to have a company working. Yeah, I would say the harder part uh, for the because we have a time restraint is to not speak too much neither because I'm having this kind of conversation like <laughs> especially on. Um, crises and opportunities and new ideas that can come up. So 
I could stay with you for the whole afternoon. <laughs> I wouldn't mind, I'm sure. Um, so um, we have a, a question from Galaxy, and uh, uh, Galaxy is from Philippines. Uh, so okay. we have uh, we have um, people attending from California and Philippines, and uh, I'm not sure if uh, if. Uh, uh, everyone can can put where they, they are located right now. That would be nice to to see uh, how uh, our um, attendees are, are spread around the world. Uh, so Galaxy from uh, Philippines uh, is asking, or maybe we can um, actually. Um, oh, I think she has. Uh, no, she, she may have a um, uh, connection issue, but Galaxy was asking how to give good service to hospitality clients in this time of pandemics. So I guess what she means by good service is um, not, necessarily, not necessarily luxury service, but more on the getting, getting the, make sure the customer comes back and he's happy about it. What the opportunities that the crisis give you is to connect with your client like you, you didn't do before. Meaning that, and I felt it with, with Petrosian and with uh, the Caviar when we started to reach out to people in person um, to create classes, to create events uh, together online and showing that the brand you are, you, are, you are with or you built is really caring about their friend. And it's not because it's a crisis time that they're not gonna get involved to give more and what we did is since end of february we've been launching classes every week so we uh, until uh, mid of july every week caviar and champagne classes and the first four or five classes we had people all over the us in quarantine and very affected by the situation and a lot of questions about the situation and it really it, it got emotional to, uh, to, to we had classes especially the four or five first where people were like, it's my only activity of the food of the week. And I'm, and people that are wealthy, yeah, they're buying caviar, they're buying champagne, but it was a relief to, to, to be with people, to engage, to talk, to exchange, to learn. And so to answer the question is, I would say the good service in this time, you have tools, you have technological tools to reach out to your client directly. Sending a blast email is not, is in my opinion, it's not what a good service should be about. It's personalizing it, maybe calling after uh, to make sure the person had a good time instead of just sending a review. Um, if it depends, of course, of the volume of clients you have, but if you are able to do that, to take the time to just even send an email directly to this person, uh, that that would change the whole the whole perspective of your client and the one thing we realized for the last six months in is in any industry the bakery the caviar and industry is a champagne anything the clients and customers are much more willing to understand delays and much more willing to understand mistakes because they're just so happy and glad that the company is still alive and is doing and working and doing something for them by shipping it across the country, by, by calling them, checking if they're fine. Uh, if if um, uh, Galaxy has a database of a private client she used to serve a lot before crisis, sending just an email to ask if they're fine and making sure the family is fine and all of that, it, it might mean nothing to you because you write it, and the, but if five of those 10 customers gets attached to it, the memories they're gonna have is gonna be forever. They're gonna be attached with your brand forever because you're gonna be the only brand in the whole world who thought of them in this time. So really uh, from what you are saying, um, personalized service, so very um, a, a human dimension into the relationship you can have with your clients is probably key. So yeah, it is key. And now that I'm rereading the question, I'm wondering also if she was not thinking in um, more like how to serve the client with a mask and and uh, uh, and, every, and in direct contact more than uh, through through online. And I would say that it yeah, obviously it changes a lot. Um, you don't see a smile, or it's harder to see. Um, but the experience you're giving to whatever industry you are, even a fast food or 
or a high-end restaurant or a hotel, it's not necessarily about the person that is in front in the way that it is the person that is in front of me, it's more his or her behavior, her, her contact with the person, the, to talk, to inquire, again, inquiring about health, about how they are, how they're, how, if they're tourists or foreigners, how they fly around, uh, how are the flights, uh, are the family fine, when are they going back, and uses this everyday topic to put it in a more um, genuine way of caring, I would say. Mm -hmm. So we have another question from uh, Hannah. Yeah. Um, I, I can try to um, allow Hannah to, to talk so she can ask the question by herself. Let's try that. Hannah, can you um, unmute yourself and do you want to ask your question? Yes, yeah, so hello, good evening. Hello, Hannah. Where are you calling from? I am from Philippines. Oh, Philippines too. Welcome to Philippines. <laughs> Hello. So my question is, um, how many months or years will it take for the hospitality industry to cope up with all that is happening right now? So um, that's a hard question what you're asking me because they are two things to take in consideration. And there are also things uh, I could more easily answer on private. Um, uh, but to give you an idea, a lot of hotels will reopen when the international flights will, will restart. Uh, I've heard a lot of uh, general manager of hotels mentioning the correlation between international flights reopening especially in the US, in the Philippines, I don't, I guess there are some, um, some countries cannot come in neither. I don't know about that. Uh, but in the US, Europeans cannot come and Americans cannot go to Europe. And therefore, the moment those flights will reopen, they will, they will reopen the, the, the hotels because they cannot survive just with local residents, with local tourists. Do you, Anna, do you know if, uh, if so in Philippines, how is it doing? Is a, did they open the flights to internationals? Um, there were flights open internationally, but not all are open. So, so that might be a first part of the answer that it might be correlated. Uh, and the reopening of the, um, the, the airports might be correlated with the vaccine. Um, a lot of vaccine, or even earlier, hopefully, but a lot of uh, Moderna, Gilead, a lot of uh, pharmaceutical brands are mentioning that uh, they're expecting a vaccine for end of Q1 2021, so like around March. So I would say the moment tourists can come back, uh, don't worry, the, all the hotels will reopen. And we'll be looking for, for staff because they will need to be restaffing. Yeah, so for all the hotels who have been closed, um, they will probably try to rehire their, their former team, but there will be also a lot of opportunities uh, for positions that uh, are not able to be filled with the, 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 the previous employees. So that means uh, a lot of openings in the hospitality as well, right? It is, it is. Uh, we can see, uh, at least in New York, we can see a lot of hotels that have um, most of their staff that were going to get on the, um, the retirement in the next five years, they're taking, uh, they're taking anticipating leave. And uh, because the hotel is closing temporarily and instead of just waiting, they're doing the unemployment plus uh, retirement and they finish, uh, they, they retired uh, some years earlier. So there will be all this stuff to, to, to rehire. There will be, uh, oh, sorry, there will be all the spots that will be available and there will be all the spots of people who are in the crisis, have no jobs now because the hotels are closed and they must find another, another work, another job. And therefore, when the hotel will be reopening, they will be working somewhere else. So there will be new, new, um, new opportunities and positions that will open up a lot. 
without counting all the hotels that will open, meaning being built. Because that's something also that uh, um, we didn't talk about, but a lot of brands, are, of course, uh, they're opening plan every year. And the opening plans for 2020 have been postponed to 2021, a lot of them. And therefore in 2021, you're gonna have much more hotels that open, the one plan for 2020 plus the one plan for 2021. And so it, 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 it means more, uh, obviously more, more work opportunities and position, opening position. Yeah, so everybody should get ready to get their degree and uh, to start uh, internship or what's going to happen fast and, uh, and strong. Uh, we just need to be patient. And uh, I know we have students who already, uh, you know, starting working for hotels who have started to, uh, to reopen. And uh, so the, there is a crisis in the hospitality industry, but uh, there, there are openings as well. There is, and there will be a very high demand the moment it, it gets back. So I'm, I'm hoping for Q, end of Q1, Q2, um, 2021, there will be a lot of, uh, of demand from the tourists, obviously, but also from all the events, the locals, the, the, the weddings, um, the parties. Uh, it's, it's, it's gonna be massive. We can see, to give a little parallel, we can see how much hairdresser got super crazy uh, right after the quarantine. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be like this for hospitality once, uh, once uh, international flights get back to normal. Yeah, that's, that's really good to hear. Uh, do we have other questions? Uh, no, I don't see some. Um, I, have, uh, I have one for you. Um, from your experience, since you, you, you are working with partners for the last four years or six years, mm -hmm. um, what, what, what are you looking for uh, in a good partner? What are the, the, the key things that you should look for uh, in your partners if you if you are you know an entrepreneur you are looking for partners to um, uh, for this endeavor what are you looking for uh, in order to, to to make it work because we have seen so many examples of people getting partners and then it doesn't work out so i know it's uh, you know it's if it so so very good question um there are two ways of of doing it you can either, if you want to play it safe, take people like yourself that have the same method, the same willingness or the same planification. I'm someone who relaxes to plan out and uh, will have deadline. However, if you partner with people that are exactly like you, you're closing yourself to a, a very big part of the, of the picture. To give you an example for BWB, so the project we're, we're raising funds for, out of the five founders, if you do um, different, different personality tests, and we are completely different. You have one completely dreamy, uh, artist style kind. Uh, uh, you, ha you have one that also likes a bit more planning, but is a bit more into improvising than, uh, than, just, uh, than just planning out and, uh, and uh, having everything set. Uh, we, have, uh, we have one that is more a human person on a human touch. So I would say, if you build your team, go for skill sets that you don't have. Get the same values and same principles between the people, but this, I guess you feel it. Uh, it's not, you, you feel it by talking, by exchanging. Share your vision already. Once you have the same vision, whatever the background you have, whatever uh, the, the skill set, the behavior, the behavior trait, trait you have, it might, it, it might match because you're always in the, on, the, on for the same goal. So really the, the number thing you want to look for is, do you guys have the same values, same principles? That's the number one. Then go for different skill sets to have a full, a full picture. It's like if a painter just have blue and red to paint, uh, to paint something. I mean, it's gonna be uh, quite monotone. So you want so, as much, differentiation you, 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 you might want in terms of skill set, way of thinking, way of planning. You don't necessarily need to be too many neither because there'll be too many people is 
it's always hard. Uh, it's always harder than being two, um, two or three. But there is one thing you need also to, that needs to be clear for everybody is that in any project, the, you need somebody that has authority to, as we say in French, to cut the apple in two and make the choice. And this, that needs to be agreed by everybody. Even if there is, it's, it's, there is a partnership, you're exchanging, you're uh, listening to, to advice, recommendation, uh, sometimes not following your own first thought, but changing to your partner's one. But you need someone that is able to, to, to make the final choice, if need be, if need be, of course. So yes, that would be the three, four points I'd be looking for for people. Very well, thank you, uh, Sergei. Maybe uh, one more question. Um, based on your experiences, uh, your tries, uh, sometimes uh, you, know, you wanted to launch uh, a business and, and as you mentioned during your presentation, uh, you, you were just a step backward and someone um, took the opportunity before you. Um, with all these uh, experiences, um, what are the key things that you learned and um, you know, if you look backward, maybe that would make you do things differently. Uh, you you mean link to the crisis or more on the other side, on the on a, on a general basis? Um, since the topic of um, uh, you know a subject topic uh, today is more. Uh, access on the, you know, the crisis, um, I would say, you know, more related to that. But if you have uh, a useful hint, you know, uh, or tips that you would like to share that, that, that would be also useful in any uh, situation, that, that, that's good too. There are two things. There are women, we talked a lot about timing. That's definitely one. Um, and I, I, I haven't been fast enough on the, on the hygiene and uh, project uh, for some plus. We haven't been fast enough. So you're t managing the timing. It's, and not being scared to have short deadline. If you know you, if you feel you can meet them, just do it, go for it. Because the, the rest of the world is not gonna wait for you. Definitely. And the moment you have competition started to kick in, and especially if you're a startup and they're much bigger than you, that one might demotivate you and two uh, take over most of the market. So timing, timing is very key. Um, I, uh, I would say on a second thing is, and it's kind of linked to it, is to do it, to just do it. Uh, um, and we talk a lot about it between the founders of BWB. If we don't do this project, it's been six years, we're spending time together and, uh, and energy we spend a full week in February, just before the crisis, a uh, full week in February, where we all gathered here in New York and worked. I took a week of vacation. We all took like our vacations. We came here and we stayed in the apartment working for the whole week from 8 a.m. to 1 a.m. with a whole schedule plan when the breakfast, lunch, and stuff. And that allowed us to today have a final presentation to present to investor we have uh, an advisor for, um, uh, uh, for Bernard Arnault uh, uh, that is on the advisory board uh, of it. Uh, we have a guy from Nestle as well that could be on it. We have a, a CMO of Remy Cointreau who is uh, on the advisory board. And all of this because we prepared on paper, we did all the business plan, all the financials, really what we've learned in a bachelor and an MBA, definitely. And we spent, again, 8 a.m. to 1 a.m. for five days in a row. We were completely bur burnt out. We were out of energy, literally. Really, of, uh, couldn't think anymore after the fifth day. So to do it, to make sure to do it, especially we have time today uh, because of the crisis. There are, there are, it's allowed. It, no, it's allowed. It, it made some industry much more busy, but also because everything is super accessible and very easy to access. Everything is faster. You want to make a PowerPoint or an Excel, you have some pre-format that's already made. 
you don't need to think much. You just need to put the numbers in and, and you have your, your whole format. So today is uh, access to technology is, is, is very uh, a blessing for, for everybody to, to make it faster. So to do it, to just go for it. And uh, as we said with a BWB member, if we don't do this project, we will regret it for the rest of our life. We will think we spent the, the last six years for nothing. So it's not an option. As we say between ourselves, it's, a, it's not an option not to open. So to do the thing. timing, number one, and to, to do and act on it and surround yourself with people that, uh, that can bring you higher and that are better than you in, in different areas. Yes, and, and, and really put on paper all your plans. The planning is a really, really important step. Planning is important. I mean, it depends on the size of the project, of course, but in any size, you need it on paper. You need to, it helps also to share your vision. Because you're an investor or an advisory board, you receive a number, a number of uh, new concepts, uh, and we start to receive some as well because we start to get on some advisory board as well. A new concept constantly. And if it's not something that is talking clearly, uh, that is speaking about it, that makes that the investor sees your vision and share it and wants to be part of it, there is no way. You need, that's why you need to put emotion. And especially in our industry, in hospitality, the hurt, I think we all agree that the hurt of our industry before the quality, before the, the type of service, the level, uh, luxury, non-luxury, it's the passion we share about our clients, about our colleagues, uh, and about our products. So it's, it's all about sharing this emotion. Then we can get more in details about the, the concept. Does it really make money? Does it work? And so that, that brings me uh, to my next question. Uh, it's a nice transition because I wanted to ask uh, when you're um, looking out for money investors, what are they, what are they looking for? Um, what's the difference between finding investors, uh, you know, a year ago and now? So, um, I would say so what they're looking for, they, they, first of all, there are two types of investors. They are the private investors that is here and that is looking for passion and love and uh, who always dream to have uh, his restaurant chain. And, uh, and that's where passion is very important. And you have a second type of investors like hedge funds, banks, um, that are not looking for passion. They are looking for return on investment. So you need to adapt your, your speech, your presentation, what you say. You can have two presentations. Now, what it changed in what they're asking now is, I would, I would say um, that now they're more careful on, what the, on how the concept match the crisis. That's important. Um, even if it's planned after the crisis, how do we use this crisis to show the investor that it's because of this crisis that you're going to make even more money or that we're going to be even more successful? Uh, before it was uh, well, uh, like every day uh, restaurant plan and stuff. Okay, my concept is better, my team is better. Now you you have a, a new aspect into it to show the market opportunities on the real estate by doing your your whole real estate analysis, the differences of prices. Uh, that's actually what we're doing. We have brokers looking for areas and we see prices dropping and dropping and we're adjusting our presentation constantly every week. So uh, on the real estate, on the consumption behavior of, uh, of your clients, uh, on the, um, the traffic in the streets and in your restaurant, how it, it will increase from a restaurant that is today or a year ago and right after the crisis because everybody after a crisis wants to go out and spend and, and, uh, and enjoy the time. So I would say that's more what they're looking for now. For a hospitality business, at least. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Sergei. And uh, that also reminds me um, one of our 
conversation uh, when organizing this webinar uh, among the, the kind of opportunities that are created with the crisis is the real estate. Absolutely. Yeah, the real estate. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, of course. I don't want to say all the secrets before I open the other project, but <laughs> the, um, what we, we see in the real estate uh, clearly is a drop in the rent, of course, uh, for commercial, but for residential too. Huh? If you want to get into the real estate business and starting, starting taking loans and buying and uh, selling or building on it and selling, it's the right moment too, according to areas, because as well as uh, city, New York City, for example, the price drops, uh, upstate, Connecticut, and towns, uh, I would say even Texas, prices doesn't drop yet because that's where people are going. But on the other end, it's increasing. So it's a bit after the curve, but it's still gonna be increasing, increasing for the, in my opinion, in the next 18 months. So they are, they are bargaining powers that are now into the buyers that were not the case before. Because a year ago, you wanted to buy something in New York, they would say, well, there are 50 people waiting for it, uh, for, for, this, uh, for this location. So what do you offer more? Now it's more the other way. It's uh, I have 50 other locations that I can go into. What do you offer more than the other one? Um, because retailers reta retailers want uh, want want um, so tenants. We we were able with our bakery. We negotiated. We're now paying 50% of our rent, and he's very happy of doing it because at least we didn't we didn't uh, close. So he still gets his money. He we need to think that the the, the the scale, the business scale on the, of a business as a retail business or as any business is to make money and, and to make more money or as much money as you spend. For a landlord, less, it's not because he owns it that he makes sure that he has his mortgage, he has his property tax. So this needs to break even for him too in order to, to pay back and what, what he owes. So he's in the same situation that, uh, than everybody else. And that's where there is a very big bargaining power to, to negotiate on. I think you're muted, Natalie. Okay, we, we're gonna have one more question and that's from Theodore, uh, he's a, a Vatel student. And uh, Theodore, if you're ready, I would like to uh, allow you to talk and ask your question yourself. Thing is muted. Hello, Natalie, hello, Sergey. Okay. okay. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for the, this meeting. Yes. So, hello, Theodore. How are you? Yes. I'm, I'm Thank good. Thank you for I, joining I this to, webinar. Oh, my pleasure. So I just moved to New York City, so the city of Sergey. So as an OBT student, what kind of jobs can we do right now waiting the end of the, the pandemic? So where should we apply? That's my question. So, and I think we talked a bit to other uh, before, before yes we do we did not linked to this meeting but um, but about the opportunity and um, so and unfortunately hot as we mentioned restaurant hotels it's gonna be very hard for them to hire this year that's for sure however there are other industries that are coming up we can see online sales uh, so, so like uh, all the e-commerce for uh, any type of goods, actually. And you can look for, for luxury goods as well. We have distributors of truffles, of, uh, of not, not, not caviar, but distributors of truffles and other luxury goods, rare goods, like, like white raspberries and this kind. They are looking for people because chefs are, are ordering private chefs, private yield, private clients. And so their demand is increasing. The liquor stores, luxury, very high-end liquor stores, it's not a, li a liquor store, it's not necessarily uh, uh, the, small, uh, the small liquor store when you have your uh, few spirits and wine uh, that you're going to. You have some luxury liquor stores that are dealing with all the, the wealthy families, the wealthy brands, and that are doing partners. 
they are looking for people because they never did such big sales um, uh, online. They need people to help uh, on, on buying the, the wine, of selling it. They're open to public as well. People are going into liquor store. We can see in New York since uh, September, so since two weeks, people are more in the street than, uh, much more in the street than before. Um, so I would say Zeus Industries, and on the short term, I would say Zeus Industries, so online events as well, on, uh, uh, I would say online events, trying to find uh, brands. What you could do is to find brands that are looking for people to, as a sales rep, meaning you would sell their product as a licensed sales rep. You don't get a salary, you get a commission on what you're getting, on what you're selling. Uh, that's something the companies are looking for now because there is zero risk for them. And they're, they're, uh, they're, they're definitely, uh, and, and it can stay in the luxury industry again. Yeah, I'm taking again the example of truffle, but you have the same with champagne, with wines, uh, and uh, with chocolate as well, like uh, luxury chocolate brands from Switzerland or from Belgium, they're they are looking for people. So as an OPT, I'm sure it's not necessarily what you were expecting, uh, as it's not uh, in the hospitality, pure hospitality, uh, but there are some new, new, new thoughts uh, on, uh, from the from the from this side industry, I, I would say, that are looking for for talents and people who who are educated, uh, that uh, got their MBA, uh, are willing to work a lot. To, uh, that that's definitely something they're looking for. Thank you. Thank you, Sergey. Thank you, Theodore, for your question. Also, I know, um, you know, since um, you're, you're, you're a current student at Vettel USA and uh, looking for your internship as OPT, um, many students have also found uh, placements in, in hotels uh, uh, outside of big cities, you know, for resorts or, or ski uh, resorts, you know, in the mountains or uh, because uh, people are able to travel inside the country. And so, you know, especially those people from big cities, they want to enjoy some vacation and, uh, and they will be more uh, inclined to book a hotel uh, in, in a resort. So I have, I have uh, uh, let me know if, uh, if I'm wrong, Sergey, but I have uh, uh, a tendency to think maybe uh, the hotels in big cities like New York are more affected than the resorts. That's true. No, that, that's true. I actually haven't uh, haven't thought of um, of outside uh, big city, but definitely. So if Theodore is still around, definitely hospitality, restaurant groups, hospitality groups. I'm thinking uh, so the mountains because the season is going to be starting, um, but also in the area where people people move to. New York City, they were like the highest number of move out in the last five years, in like six months. Uh, and they all moved somewhere, obviously. They moved to upstate, they moved to, uh, to Florida, they, uh, they are area, and this needs to, there needs to be a full research on it. I, have, I don't have all the numbers, but there are areas that is getting more and more populated, and therefore restaurants and hotels will boom uh, activities will will uh, will will increase. There is also we mentioned a bit about the real estate. That's something I didn't mention, but uh, work uh, on real estate as well. Uh, that's uh, that's really promising on the um, in the future uh, in the future uh, years and months. Um, it's always real estate is always safe, but to not to say invest yourself, but to help people find their place, the right place. Um, and it can be luxury. You have some luxury real estate app as well uh, for accommodations, kind of a, a luxury Airbnb, but you are, it's only, you only have mansions and, uh, and, and beautiful places. So, so, so I'm sure those are also companies that might be interested in, in, in people, um, especially for the customer service a lot, because those apps, they have beautiful properties, but their customer service is often lacking because they don't come from this industry. So, but yes, 
outside of big cities. That's also that's definitely something. Uh, again, I don't have the numbers. I wouldn't say really the locations because I don't know enough about it. But yeah, that's uh, that's something worth to look at. Mm. Thank you very much, Sergei. Um, time flies, it's already 11.30 and we have to uh, uh, end this uh, webinar. It was uh, a really, really nice speaking to you and, and learning you know, from your experience. I uh, hope everyone uh, enjoyed that webinar as well. Um, if Vivian can uh, uh, switch to some slices, we're going to... Uh, finish up with uh, some announcements and uh, say again, how do people contact you uh, through LinkedIn? Through LinkedIn, uh, through LinkedIn it's easier and then I would, uh, I, I would uh, answer my, either my phone number or my email and so people can reach out to me directly. But on LinkedIn, I mean, they type my name, they're going to find me. Don't hesitate if they have questions, uh, inquiries, or even a business proposition, I'm always uh, happy to hear, uh, even to be on the maybe not necessarily involved, but uh, on the advisory board to to guide uh, or to help out uh, as much as I can. Uh, I'd be happy to do so. Very well, thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure some uh, some uh, brilliant mind will uh, jump on the opportunity. Uh, again, uh, I'm going to leave you the lead to, uh, uh, to close with this uh, announcement for uh, the CSML programs. Yes, um, our California okay. school, can you hear me? Yeah, the California School of Management Leadership, uh, we will have uh, several webinar series in next few months. So uh, for I me, the connection Natalie, if you don't mind, just before, just th thank you. Because I, I must go, I have another meeting. So I just wanted to thank you very much, Vivian and Alliant and uh, Natalie uh, and Vatel and, and uh, the people who followed the, the, the webinar. So if they, and if they as, as you mentioned, if they want to contact me, they can just send me a little message to, to, on LinkedIn and I'd be happy, happy to answer. So have a wonderful day, guys. And uh, thank you again. Great. Thank you so much, Sergey. Thank you for taking the time and sharing your experience. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And uh, of course, you can also direct your questions to me uh, and I will be happy to forward to Sergey. Uh, Vivian, sorry for the interruption. You can move forward. Uh, no problem. I just typed uh, the aligned uh, event calendar on the chat. So anyone, if interested in register those webinars, you can you can find those uh, on our aligned website. So yeah. Oh, Natalie, you are mute. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you, Vivian. Uh, so I was saying, if you uh, wish to have more information about Vatel, uh, the programs, uh, feel free to email us at info at vatelusa.com. You can also call us at 310-421-1400 and we will uh, give you all the information. We have uh, an intake starting this October and uh, another one in January. Uh, so there is time to enroll if you, if you want to be part of the uh, hospitality mm -hmm. industry and take advantage of all these uh, openings uh, that we are forecasting for, for basically next year. Uh, and Alliance International University, you can uh, call them at 858-635-4233 or email uh, Vivian uh, um, at Alliant or uh, El Nadiri at Alliant.edu. Uh, we will be happy to give you all the information you need. Um, it's very late, it's even uh, 44, 34. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, it was a very, uh, very, very uh, interesting webinar. I hope you like it and I will see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you. Bye.